Cookies, muffins, pastries, and everything else in between. Bakeries are one thing that will always be around. And if you're looking to create a bakery and start one from scratch, you might be asking yourself, how much money does it take to start a bakery? Well, I'm gonna dive into my own experience on this podcast and explain to you what I went through when I opened our bakery with my wife on retail bakeries from brick and mortar onto e-commerce businesses and why brick and mortar bakeries are quite an investment. And it can cost you a pretty penny if you're looking to start out. But I'll explain to you how we did it and we did it on a smaller scale, got our experience that we did from running it and then from there transitioned onto our e-commerce business where our business has skyrocketed. So how much money does it take to start a bakery? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dive into, I've got 11 topics, 11 specific things I'm gonna cover. Um, If you're not familiar with what it would take to actually get one going, these are probably the 11 most uh, expensive and most important aspects of getting started. Now there's a lot of variations in the pricing for what I'm about to tell you because it's gonna be dependent upon location, the size of the facility, also the type of bakery that you're gonna have. The one that we actually had, we allowed people to come in and pick up products and then they would take them with them. And we didn't really have seating inside or we didn't have tables set up and that type of thing because of the space that we were limited on, but we did have seating out front and in front of the bakery. But our bakery was more or less one that you could pick up products, gelato, panini sandwiches, breads, pastries, cannolis and cookies and a whole bunch of other items. And pick them up and then take them with you uh, wherever you wanted to go. So there's a lot of variations in different styles and ways that you can start a bakery, uh, which actually has a has a dependence. It's going to be dependent upon a lot of money as far as what you're going to invest as well. So the first thing that we're going to talk about too is we're going to get into location, location and rent. Number one, first and foremost, you need to find a spot, a location, 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 as they always say. You need to find a location that is extremely high foot traffic. When you're running a brick and mortar bakery, you're going to want to look for a spot that has specifically a lot of people coming in and coming out. Okay. Now, the the closer you are to more and more people and the more busier it is, the higher the rent's going to be. That's just a common sense thing. And if, again, if it's something new that you may not be aware of, having a location that's perfect and great and has a lot of traffic, you're going to pay a premium for that. Our bakery was kind of off the beaten path a little bit. It wasn't necessarily in La La Land, but it was not exactly on the front uh, of the highway, very close to a very busy trafficked area or in a grocery mall or a plaza. Um, so we actually paid a lot less for our rent and a lot of our expenses were uh, basically what we could afford at the time because we actually invested the money that we had of our own. We didn't have any outside investors. So the location that we had was good, but it could have been better, yes. Uh, so you want to make sure that you find a location that actually is super, super busy and gets a lot of foot traffic. Now, keep that in mind. Um, you're going to be paying anywhere. Of course, this is going to be dependent upon the size of the building. The average retail bakery, average retail, if you go to a strip mall, you go to one of these malls where you have a, a grocery store or a grocery chain or something like an anchor store, and then you got a whole bunch of stores next to it. On average, those are about 1,200 to 1,400 square feet. Normally, the average for that per month is about $2,500 to about $4,000 in rent just for the location, okay? And again, there's a lot of variables that come into play with this. So I'm just going to give you some ballpark ideas of what you're, what you're going to expect to pay. So around $2,500 to $4,000 a month for the rent, okay? Um, and normally, you're going to have uh, some places do a security deposit very similar to renting like an apartment or you're renting a condo. So you got to be aware of that too, that you're going to have a first and last month's up front and some type of security deposit. So... You're gonna have 2,500 bucks times two, that's five grand you're gonna come up with, and then some type of security deposit, which is probably gonna be about $1,200 or $1,000 or so on the minimum. Okay, so next up, the next thing is number two, equipment. This is gonna be one of the biggest investments you're going to have. Commercial ovens, cooling racks, prep tables, uh, service tables, wrapping tables, anything that you've got as far as large equipment is concerned. If you have ovens and, and if you're potentially cooking anything, if you're melting chocolates to put on certain cookies or if you're caramelizing certain uh, sugars and such, you're going to have to have a stove. Is that going to be electric or gas stove? You know, So these types of commercial stoves as well can be very expensive. So how much money, Damien, would I be looking at for equipment? This again is going to vary also on how much space you have and how many actual prep tables, uh, storage shelving units that you may need, any of those things. And traditionally, that's all made of metal. Those are going to be quite pricey. So on a minimum, and again, this is conserv- conservative, forty to $50,000 in equipment. Okay, If you can do it for less, more power to you. Um, if you're able to find also a good way to cut corners a little bit is to find used commercial equipment, used kitchen equipment, used restaurant equipment. There are facilities, there's companies all over the United States, everywhere, every state that resell used or slightly used equipment. 
that's a way that you can save a ton, trust me, a ton of money. We actually bought, I think, two items that were brand new. Prep, I had a sandwich prep table that cost me $3,000. It was literally just a table that was for sandwich prepping. Uh, the kind of thing that you like, if you go to, to, to Subway or a sandwich shop, and you've got all those different uh, uh, available things, uh, toppings, lettuce, and all that stuff, and you've got your cold cuts, all of that. The prep table was about $2,500 or $3,000 just for that one table. Um, and that was brand new. So yes, you can get your hands on used equipment. I would suggest, if you're just starting out and doing this, try to find used equipment. Don't jump into it really quick uh, by getting brand new stuff. You don't necessarily need to do that. Number three, remodeling. Now, you're gonna go into a space, potentially either it's either two ways, brand new or it's used. If the space is a used space and there was a business in it prior to you being there, you're going to need to remodel it. So number three is remodeling. Uh, from lighting to furnishings to fixtures to wall decor, painting, uh, floor, you may have to put a new flooring down. You may have to redo some wiring or electrical work. All of that remodeling is something that comes to mind. And then just, I put a number out there about twenty dollars to $30,000 because having custom lighting, custom painting, um, if you have to add a drop ceiling, if you have to lower the ceiling, or if you have to do anything to the ceiling structure itself, there may potentially have to be something done with elect electrical work. For a commercial place, that's going to be very expensive. So remodeling, such as lighting and furnishing, that's going to be on another twenty or thirty grand. Okay. And again, if you can cut corners, if you can get these things done at a lower price, definitely all the more power to you. Um, number four is small wares. So right off the bat, what is small wares? So utensils and, and spoons and tongs and, and these types of things that you cook with spatulas uh, forks and, pl and plates if you have to have some disposable plates and such serving plates serving small wares that you're going to serve your obviously your baked goods your cookies your muffins whatever it is uh, wax paper bags brown paper bags if you're serving bread all of these things you'd have to invest up front you got to have these different things in place for your customers to actually take the product and eat it um, or take it home with them and then eat it so small wares anything of that sort packaging even small little bags baggies containers uh, disposable food containers these are things you'd have to invest in on a low end you're looking at about a thousand to two thousand dollars for that up front because you obviously have to have that in order for you to serve a donut you're not going to hand it to the person and put it in their hand so if that's what you're looking to do you're going to need to have those in place as well so number five is going to be insurance now this is also something that can become very costly up front depending on the type of insurance you're going to get. But in general, just a general vague thing, insurance for your bakery, you're going to need to get, it could be anywhere from $700 to about $1,200 a year. And again, I'm not an insurance agent. I'm simply letting you know what I've actually personally dealt with. You're gonna have also workers' compensation. If you have employees, you're gonna have workers' compensation. Product, you have liability insurance. You're gonna have uh, basically traditional uh, business la retail insurance where people are coming in and out of your facility. Um, they could slip and fall, they can hurt themselves, any of that sort. So a traditional business license for retail establishment as well is something you, you'd have to look into. So you have a variety of different types of insurances that you'll have to have, okay? And that's obviously something you have to have right when you open the door, you can't get that down the road. So insurance, number six, is utilities. Yes, believe it or not, utilities will add up. You're gonna have water usage, electrical usage, and guess what? Also garbage pickup. This is something that a lot of people don't realize about retail food eateries is that you have to pay a really hefty price for commercial garbage pickup. Now, if you're in a uh, shopping plaza or a shopping mall, a strip mall where you've got all kinds of stores that are lined up next to you, most of the time you'll have the ability to pay basically a portion of the collective amount for the garbage pickup. I can tell you from my own experience, we paid I think it was 200 to $250 a month just to pick up the garbage, yes. At our commercial bakery, we had about a $200 bill every month just to pick up the garbage. So keep that in mind. That could be anywhere from $500 to $900 a month, which would include the utilities, the water, and the garbage. Those are expenses that you will incur when you start your own bakery and you're asking yourself how much money does it take to start a bakery because <laughs> this question will come up a lot in your head. Next up, number seven is marketing. Now, this is something that's either localized. When you have a brick and mortar, obviously you're not a website, you're e-commerce. You're gonna have a localized business you're gonna need to advertise, whether it be through Facebook ads locally, but you do that through the internet. Um, if you're gonna be uh, printing up labels or leaflets and starting to go to local businesses and let them in the area, know that you're there. If you stop at schools, maybe universities or other corporations, corporate parks, corporate buildings, you have to get out there and you have to hand out leaflets or brochures. Getting that out there is gonna cost money. Now, doing it online is great because a lot of now on Facebook, having the ability to have localized communities and localized groups within your city or county, you can run those ads and you can target people specifically on Facebook and let them know you're there. Now, the other great thing about being in the location, if you're in a very busy location, 
that is a huge blessing because you don't have to necessarily pay for people to obviously drive by in multitudes. If you're in a busy plaza, you're going to get all of that traffic and that's free marketing, free advertising because people are literally going by your place. That is absolutely amazing. That's one of the reasons why you pay a premium in rent is because you're getting all that traffic and you don't have to pay for the traffic. You just have to pay for the rent. So that's another uh, benefit to make sure that you find a great location. All right, so number eight, you wanna have a website. Now, yes, you're a brick and mortar bakery, but you wanna have a website because you have the ability, if you have a brick and mortar bakery, you can actually create a website and ship in products over, over state lines and do an e-commerce business. So you have two sources of income. You got your retail bakery and you've got your online presence, right? You have your website. So, but the thing is you have to build that website and you have to maintain it every month. So the monthly fee for hosting a website on average is between 30 to $40 a month. And on top of that, to have an actual uh, website built for you, it could be anywhere from a couple hundred, 800, even up to $1,000 to have a professionally done website, okay? And if you have a lot of baked goods, you have a lot of different listings and different products on your website, that's gonna cost you probably close to about $1,000. The more involved the website is, I've built them out. I've built six of them since I've done this business. I'm very familiar with uh, building websites. They are very involved, very time consuming. So number nine, employees and payroll. Now, this is something that a lot of first time entrepreneurs who build out bakeries or even any type of food business don't get this and understand. You're gonna have employees. You may only have two or three, doesn't make a difference. But if you have two or three, or if you have even one, okay, or if you have a hundred, you have to have payroll. Employee payroll, you need to have a certain amount of money three months to six months in advance, okay, to have a safety net. Because as your business begins to start, you're not gonna be making profit the first day you open. You're not gonna be making a profit the, quite a few months into it. You may be breaking even, which is okay. But you have to understand your employees still have to be paid. So you have a three to six month window, you have a three to six month collection of money that you need to have for employee payroll alone, okay? So it's kind of a reserve you need to have. Keep that in mind as well. That, I can't tell you a price of that because that's gonna be dependent upon what you're paying per hour, how many employees you have, how long are they going to work each day. So I mean, you could, you know, I could tell you ten thousand or fifteen thousand dollars, and that may not even cut it. So keep that in mind that you need to have employee payroll in advance of opening your your bakery. Number ten, ingredients. So you need to have ingredients, obviously, but you need to have a good amount of them to have enough to produce the products you need because you may potentially sell out. Maybe your bakery is a big hit. If you don't have enough ingredients and you're sold out of products, then customers are going to get annoyed. Okay. So I would rather be on the higher side of that. You need about $5,000 or more worth of ingredients. And again, this will be dependent upon the type of actual baked goods that you're making. If you're making really cheap and expensive donuts and it's just a couple ingredients, then you don't have to have maybe so much. If you have pastries, you have cannolis, you have cookies, you have uh, breads, you have muffins, you have cakes, and you have, that's a lot of different ingredients. And if that's the case, that's okay, but you need to have enough of that in stock in order for you to actually make money with it, okay? So putting that out, about, I would say about three months worth of ingredients stockpiled in your, in your place is a safe bet. And lastly, number 11, your business licenses, permits, and all of those wonderful things. You're gonna need to have a business license. You also need to create an LLC, or you create a, you need to incorporate yourself as an entity. You gotta have your EIN number. You need to have also any permits that the city or county that you're particularly building in and you're working in, they may require certain permits that you have to register with them every single year. Normally licenses, permits, and these types of things are allocated annually. So you need to have a, every year you'll be renewing them. And this can be anywhere from, I put about five to $600 worth of business licenses. Um, if you've got any, you have sales tax thing, you got also sales tax um, ID you need to have for collection of sales tax. Any localized permits could be about $100 to $200 for each permit. Um, also fire inspection, believe it or not, you have to have a fire inspection to even open the facility. Fire department will come in and look at the actual layout of your facility and see to make sure that it's okay and they'll check you off. Otherwise they'll say you're not ready to open, you need to fix a few things. The fire department will come in and inspect it as well. So also you have your department of agriculture or your health department licensing, that has to be also renewed every year. Keep it around about five to $600 for that, okay? so. These are 11 things that are super important when you sit down and you've got this question in your head about how much does it take, how much does it take to actually start a bakery. Uh, these 11 things are ultra important. So uh, if this podcast was helpful, uh, please do let us know down below. If you've got any other questions about this particular type of business, opening a bakery, let us know in the comments. I'll do my best to get to the questions as soon as possible. I'll see you guys in our next video.